You know, one of the characteristics of pro level audio for video is how well you can blend together the different audio components on camera dialogue, voiceover, sound effects, and music. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a few of iMovie's pro level audio tools to help you craft a great sounding audio track for your YouTube videos. All right, so here we are in iMovie and I have this project on the timeline. As you can see, I have various elements in this project. I've got some B-roll, I have a, some stills here. Actually, I think this is video. This is B-roll, webcam. I've got some on cameras, on screen text. And over here I have some voiceover that was delivered on camera because you can see my face there underneath some B-roll. What I wanna do here now is I wanna add a music track to this and then blend the music properly with my dialogue. The first thing you wanna do when you're blending or mixing audio is you wanna set a, a level, I call it the reference level, for the most important audio content. Nine times out of 10, the most important audio is gonna be dialogue, right? So it's gonna be the on-camera dialogue and the voiceover. So usually when I approach a mix, the first thing that I do is I optimize the dialogue so that it's got a good strong level and sounds sounds good. All right, so just looking at these clips here, we have our first clip. Now the third way to get high quality, and that's you know good level as we can see here in the audio waveform. But what I like to do in iMovie is the first thing I do is I select all of my dialogue clips by just clicking and then command clicking on the other clips like this. Then with those clips selected, I go up to the top of the preview window to the toolbar here, and I select the audio icon. And then I go over and I select the auto button here. And you can see in the timeline, some of the waveforms got a little higher. So this is sort of an automatic, as you can see there in the tooltip, automatically improves the loudness of the clips. And that's what I, I usually do first. And so now if we listen to this clip. Now the third way to get high quality So yeah, it's much, video, it's much more, more full. Involves, and you can see. It tends to be noisy and kind of echoey. You can see in the waveform, you can see the peaks here just starting to turn yellow. Having peaks that are a little yellow is okay. You don't want them to turn red. Then you know, like for example, if I click and drag on this, you see the red there? That's bad, you don't want that. That means the audio was clipping, it's gonna sound distorted. So I'm gonna pull that back down, just so it's a little yellow again. Okay, so that section well, here, your first section sounds good. Second section. Noisy and kind of camera and distant because you're standing relatively far from- Fairly full. Now over here, the voiceover- Invest in a quality Is still a bit microphone. low, I'm obviously, a bit of a distance away from the microphone. So to maximize the loudness or the level of these clips, these voiceover clips, I'm gonna select them individually here. I'll click and select, then go back up to the top of the preview window to the audio section here. And this slider here adjusts the volume of the selected clip. So I'm just gonna click and drag until the waveform of that clip is just getting a bit into the yellow, but not into the red. So something around there. And then I'll do the same thing to the other clips that are a bit low. Okay, so I've raised the level of those clips. If we just listen to them real quick. Invest in a quality external microphone. That's better. You can use USB mics like this Blue Yeti. Okay, so let's listen to the clips all together and just judge if the levels are the same. So I'll just use this clip over here. Quality isn't the greatest. It tends to be noisy and kind of echoey and than a quality external microphone. Okay, it's closer, but the on-camera clips are still a bit louder. So I'm just gonna drag down their level a little bit so that they match a little better. All right, let's listen now. The sound quality isn't the greatest. It tends to be noisy and kind of echoey and distant because the quality external microphone. You can use USB mics like this blue. That's a better match. Because so in cases like this, you wanna use the, the visual references as much as possible, the waveform, you know, is it turning yellow, stay out of the red, and you know, boosting the level using the slider. 
But at a certain point, you have to use your ears to sort of judge where things are at. So it's a combination of using the numbers and using your ears. Okay, so now that my dialogue is sounding full and it's even, I'm going to add a music clip. So I'm just going to go up here and I have this music clip in the media area that I'm going to use. So I'm going to click to select this entire music track and drag it down. Now I can put it here and attach it to this first clip and make it an attached audio clip, or I can use the music well. So what's the difference? Audio in the music well is unaffected by the video clips in the timeline. You also get another extra feature. I'm gonna drag this music out past the video. So now I'll go back into settings and select trim background music and watch what happens to the music in the music well. It's automatically trimmed to the end of the video. Okay, so we have the music placed in the music well and if I play it, Now the third way you can tell the music is way to too loud high quality video out of your web and it's interfering with sound. my dialogue, which is not what you want. Many webcam. Okay. So what do you do in this situation? Well, what a lot of people do is they just pull down the level of the music entirely. So they just grab the volume line here, click and drag it down to say, say 16% and then play it. Now the third way to get high quality video out of your webcam involves sound. And that's much better. You can hear me speaking. Many webcams. Music is back in the background, but still there. Which can work in a pinch, but the sound quality is not great. And that's great. fine. It tends to be that works. noisy. But and... what I like to do is to try and make my audio tracks more dynamic. And a good way to do that is to vary the music level in the spaces between the dialogue. So that's what we're gonna do. Just makes your soundtrack more dynamic, more engaging. So to vary the level of the music here in iMovie, we're gonna use three different techniques. So I'm just gonna click and drag on the volume line of the music and bring it back up to say, I don't know, let's say 50%. So it's not too loud. And so we have this first section where we have the image of the webcam. Now the third way- And then I start speaking. So now I want the music to come down so that you can hear my dialogue. The first method to do that is going to be using audio keyframes. So I'm gonna zoom in to the timeline by pressing Command Plus a couple times and go into this section here. So we have the visual. Now, So right about here when I start talking, I'm gonna place an audio keyframe on the music and to do that I hold down the option key on my keyboard and you can see I get this little arrow with a plus and so now when I click it places a keyframe that's an audio keyframe on the music volume line so I'm just going to go in a little bit more say to here and hold down the option key again click to create another keyframe so now all I need to do is hover over the volume line. You can see the four arrow icon or cursor here, click and drag. And now I can just pull down the music. Say to something like that. All right, let's listen to this back. Now the third way to get high quality video out of your webcam involves sound. So that's how you fade or duck the music underneath the dialogue using keyframes. Okay, so now we're gonna go to this other section and we have again, a little bit of a space here. Cam involves sound. Many webcam. So in this space, what I wanna do is bring the music back up again, real simple. We just do the same thing. I'm gonna go over to the spot where I want the music to start fading back up. Option, click. Create keyframe, go in a bit, option click, another keyframe, hover over the volume line, click and drag, and bring the music back up here. Let's listen to this. 
many webcams. Okay, so now we have another section where we want to do the same thing. So I'm going to show you a different technique to duck the music underneath the dialogue here by using the range selection tool here in iMovie. So to activate the range selection tool, we hold down the R key on the keyboard and we get this yellow cursor. That's the range tool. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click just as I start speaking here in this section, click and then drag and you see this yellow selection area and I'm going to drag all the way to where I want the music to come back up again. So let's say right about here. Okay, so now what I do is I hover over the volume line. Again, I get the four arrow cursor and now I can just click and drag the music down. And look at that. It automatically created keyframes on either side of the range selection. So now I'll just click off of that so you can see that iMovie has created four keyframes for me automatically. So let's have a listen to this. Many webcams, including this one, have a built-in microphone, which can work in a pinch, but the sound quality isn't the greatest. It tends to be noisy and kind of echoey and distant because you're standing relatively far from the microphone when you're recording. Pretty good. Now, if you're not totally happy with the position of the keyframes, I can just go in. And if I hover over the keyframe, it automatically switches to this arrow selection tool. And I can just click and drag the keyframe or adjust it as I need to. Quick listen. Many webcams, including this one when you're recording. Invest in a... All right, so the third technique for adjusting the level of music and mixing it with your dialogue is kind of automated. So I'm going to use that here in these sections. So if I'm just going to command minus out. So these final dialogue sections where I have voiceover... I'm going to use an automated technique to control the level of the music. So I'm going to select these clips individually by command clicking on them. And then I'm going to go up to the top menu again, and I'm going to select the audio button here. And then over to the right, you can see the setting lower volume of other clips. This is basically an automatic ducking function here in iMovie. And so what this does is, with the clips that are selected, I'm telling iMovie that, hey, the audio level of these clips is the priority. And what I want you to do is lower the level of all the other audio clips around it so it is the priority. So if we go up, we can see lower volume of other clips basically tells you what it's going to do. So I'm going to select that. And look what happened to the music waveform it dropped. So let's just listen to that real quick. Far from the microphone when you're recording. Invest in a quality external microphone. You can use USB mics like this Blue Yeti Pro. You can also buy... So the automatic ducking brought down the level of the music underneath these dialogue clips. And then when these dialogue clips were finished, brought the music back up and then brought it back down again. Now, as I look at the waveform of the music, I can see that the automatic ducking brought the level down a bit lower than I did manually here in these sections. So I'd like the music to be a little higher here. So to do that, I'll go up to the ducking function here and you can see the slider over to the right. And this adjusts, as it says there, the ducking volume. So watch what happens to the waveform of the music when I slide this. You can see there, that's really bringing it down. You can't even hear it. <laughs> it's down to like zero. And as I drag it to the left, it comes up. And so that's matching a bit better. I'm just going to drop it a little bit more. Yeah, that's matching pretty well. Let's have a listen to that. When you're recording. Invest in a quality external microphone. You can use USB mics like this Blue Yeti Pro.
can also buy USB to mini nice. plug adapters. Now notice over here, this space right here, the automatic ducking didn't bring the music back up. Why not? Well, this is one of the quirks of the automatic ducking function in iMovie. It needs a certain span of empty space in order to bring the music back up. And from my experiments, that span has to be at least three seconds. You can see this clip here, it says it's two seconds. If we look over at this black clip, it's five seconds. If I select this black space here and I click and drag it so that it's three seconds, watch the music waveform below it. The music comes back up. Let's have a listen. Use a familiar 3.5 millimeter input. Like this lavalier microphone. Of course, now my shot <laughs> is a little short, so I'll drag that out to cover my voiceover clip. Like this lavalier microphone. And there we go. So using a few of the audio tools in this consumer level video software, you can achieve some professional results. And if you're looking for more ways to create professional looking and sounding videos using iMovie, have a look at this playlist on my channel.